This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings. So she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Thursday, May the 5th, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In our top story, starting today, this island's teachers will be on a work to rule. President of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Pedro Shepard, made the announcement yesterday as an estimated 500 unionized educators gathered in Queen's Park, the city, which is located directly opposite to the Ministry of Education's Constitutional Road headquarters, in a strong show of disapproval over Minister of Education Ronald Jones' refusal to meet with them to iron out a number of pressing issues. Shepard, in an address to the large gathering, also disclosed that he would be writing a letter to Prime Minister Frandell Stewart seeking his intervention in the impasse. We are in the fighting mode and uh, nothing is going to turn us back unless we have a meeting. It is a peaceful war. It is not war where we are going to bring our guns blazing. We are simply saying to the minister that we are in that mood where we expect you to come and resolve these issues. Otherwise, we will do what we have to do. It means meeting once per week, twice per week during school time because we are not going to meet with our members outside of school time. We are going to put pressure and if pressure means that we have to meet during school time, we are going to meet, we are prepared to meet during school time. A former juvenile court magistrate wants the church to lead the way in molding the family in Barbados. In contributing to an Anglican Church Diocese panel discussion on the family at the University of the West Indies Cafel campus Tuesday night, UNICEF's children's champion for Barbados, Faith Marshall Harris, also contended that the church leadership of the family would ensure there were fewer deviant children. I want the church to take up the full mantle as the change agent that it really can be in terms of family. And I've been preaching this for years, I suspect, but I thought the, ch the church has a really big role to play in making a lot of things happen and happen differently within the family, define it however you will. Because I think that the only way we're going to have that revolution, that social revolution that we need is when children are brought up in the church, when the church leads the way in the kind and the nature and the quality of relationships. The granting of bail to persons facing drug-related charges based on the street value of the narcotics appears to be posing major challenges for the island's magistrates' courts. The magnitude of the problem came to light yesterday afternoon during an exchange between Defence Attorney Andrew Pilgrim QC and District A Magistrate Douglas Frederick in the case of 48-year-old salesman Dexter Wayne Reed of No. 168 Regency Park, Christ Church. Now, Reed is facing three indictable charges of possession of 282 pounds of cannabis, possession with intent to supply, and the trafficking the drugs which has a street value of $565,400. Prosecutor Station Sergeant Neville Watson had objected to bail on four grounds, including the value attached to the cannabis and the nature and seriousness of the offence. But in a strong and forceful defence, Ree's lawyer Andrew Pilgrim QC agreed that the offence was serious, but argued that there were several other factors the magistrate should consider. Pilgrim told the court that his client had turned himself into the police when he saw a notice on Facebook, was not at the house where the drugs were allegedly found, and has no previous convictions. And he reminded Frederick that several persons were charged with more serious crimes or in connection with drug fines of much larger quantities and greater value, and who had previous convictions and had been granted bail in the same court. In sports now, despite its recent World T20 Champions title, the West Indies have dropped one place to number three 
in the international T20 rankings. New Zealand have moved to the top for the first time following the ICC's annual update. The new cycle disregarded results from the 2012-2013 season and therefore West Indies, who won their first T20 championship in 2012, lost points and have dropped one place to number three. Now India is at number two and South Africa have been ranked number four and World T20 2016 finalist England rounded off the top five. There's regional and international news after this short break. Your first friend, your first love, your first teacher. Show your appreciation for the first lady in your life. Send a photo of you and your mother to we love you mom at barbadostoday.bb to be featured in our special Mother's Day photo album and for a chance to win some exciting prizes. To mom with love. We're back with news of the region now. CARICOM have now set a target for aggregated contribution of renewable energy to power generation within the region of 47% by 2027. The revelation came from Trinidad and Tobago's Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley during his address to the U.S. Caribbean Central American Energy Summit held in Washington, D.C. yesterday. Our countries, as demonstrated by the example provided a moment ago, will continue to advance the governance reforms that are necessary for the energy transitions to which we have committed ourselves through national and regional targets. The targets in all cases are ambitious, though realistic, and require, all, above all else, partnerships, private sector, public sector, local and international partnerships. The United States has also put together a financing program the Clean Energy Finance Facility for the Caribbean and Central America, which is intended to provide early stage funding to catalyze greater private and public sector investment in clean energy projects. In more regional news now, a review of Antigua and Barbuda's human rights record is being undertaken for the second time in almost five years. On Monday, May the 9th, the UN Human Rights Council Universal's Periodic Review Working Group will conduct the examination in a meeting that will be webcast live. According to a communique from the United Nations Office in Geneva, Antigua and Barbuda is one of the 14 states to be reviewed by the UPR Working Group during its upcoming session taking place from 2nd to 13th May. There are a number of documents on which the reviews are based. These include a national report, information contained in the reports of independent human rights experts and groups known as the Special Procedures, Human Rights Treaty Bodies and other UN entities. The media advisory also lists a number of issues raised in the above-mentioned documents to include tackling violence against women, combating human trafficking and addressing the needs of victims, and achieving gender parity. On the global front, a state of emergency has been declared in Canada's Alberta province after a wildfire forced all 88,000 residents of Fort McMurray to flee their city. Officials warned that the blaze could destroy much of the city and the next 24 hours will be crucial. The fast-moving fire which broke out on Sunday has already destroyed 1,600 structures in Fort McMurray. More in this NBC News report. Panic and chaos on the highway. Families fleeing for their lives from Fort McMurray, Canada. Firefighters call this hell on earth. 
No stopping, a wall of flames exploding, racing out of control. Get us out of Fort McMurray in one piece. With fire surrounding and leaping the roads, it's a harrowing and narrow escape for many. 88,000 people on the run. The largest wildfire evacuation in Canada's history. They didn't even let us take our things and when we asked them. So we lost everything now. This massive inferno is feeding on dry forests. The blaze so intense, it's generating its own weather. At least 1,600 homes and businesses torched. A hospital evacuated. <laughs> the scene apocalyptic. That's news and sports. However, you can join us again this afternoon for more. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also tune in to Channel 99 on Flow TV and Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.